Yeah, one o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech. Welcome back to Creative Contributions on ThinkTech Hawaii. Today we have the honor of having Susie Anderson, Susie Y. Anderson, in our studio to discuss her work. She is an un plein air artist, and that means she paints outside in the outside air, in the air. It's very important in Hawaii. So we're calling this show Susie Anderson on plein air. You'll find out exactly how that works. Susie can do all kinds of art, including seascapes and landscapes and people, and all kinds of art depicting the incredible sights and scenes of Hawaii. But she has gone beyond that. We'll talk about her common denominators, the common denominators of her art and her view of the world. We'll try to understand what she, what she sees in our islands, and through that, appreciate her work and ours and our view of the world and how it comes together. Welcome to the show, Susie. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Jay. It's my privilege. So, first, <clears throat> on plein air, yes. can you tell the people exactly what that means? It means, basically, in the fresh air, uh, literally from the French, and it means that I take my easel outdoors and I'm painting from life uh, rather than indoors in the studio where everything is a um, set known quantity. But the outdoors has lots of surprises. Yes, it and <coughs> challenges. Yes, and you need I took to you, go outside. And I took you painting with me <laughs> you one did, time. You did, I'll never forget that. <laughs> We did a time-lapse thing, okay, and, and every minute or two I would take another picture of Susie painting, and the whole thing was coming alive, stroke by stroke. We went uh, makapu. Makapu. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, I mean, that's the challenge of being on plein air. You have to go out in the on plein air yes. and, and find the light and find the place and find the colors and see through the photo. It can't be photographic. You've no. got to see through it in, into the essence of the environment. And it's a timing thing because it has to happen within a very short period of time. You can't be chasing the shadows. You have to get the painting down very quickly and then not change your mind despite what the <laughs> weather is throwing at you. <laughs> I, I, I think of it as like a fishing expedition. Sometimes you go out in the middle of the lake or the sea and you cast your line and you reel them in and they just fly into your boat. It's so easy to get catch that fish and then other days you can't catch a fish to say you did. no, yeah. you can't at all. <laughs> so you never know, and that's the kind of challenge yeah. I love. But in any day, on a, in any experience, you have to schlep. Yes. You have to schlep your your artist easel and your <laughs> canvas and your paints and whatnot, yeah. and um, you have to you go to remote places right. in, in the right. rocks along right. the sea coast right. and the like. Right. This it's is not so easy. <laughs> no, it's not so easy, but it keeps you in shape. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> So uh, let's let's do a uh, a short uh, slideshow here okay. of some of the photographs you brought down, including photographs of, you know, the, the people around you, the and painting itself, and the results. Okay. Okay. Let's start with uh, these photos. Okay. You can describe them as we go. Ah, oh. there you are. Ah, okay. Well, this is actually um, the reception for the um, American Society of marine artists show that I was just attending back in Maryland, which I was so excited to have a plein air painting of mine of Alona Cove accepted to this national show. And it just happened we were in New York for the seven days before this reception and found we could drive down and be there for the opening reception. So there I am next to my painting. There were about 125 paintings and sculptures, and it's a show that travels to five states and six museums over a 17-month run. So I was very excited to have a plein air painting from Hawaii accepted into this national show. Yeah, and, and just P.S. on this photograph, the photograph looks like it is also a painting, <laughs> right? Doesn't it? Yes. It's just more than just an ordinary <laughs> photograph. It looks like it was painted, and so you have a <laughs> photograph of a painting of a painting. Oh, no, that's and, that. You know, yeah, it could be. And where, and where is that, uh, where did you pick up the, you know, the, 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 the scenery there that is, that you of is Holona the Cove. Of the Where is it? That's Salona Cove, um, just before Sandy Beach in each East Oahu. It's where they filmed the famous uh, love scene, Kirk Douglas and Deborah Carr rolling around on the surf and from here to eternity. Is that right? Yes. Oh it was God. supposed to be Waikiki, but it was Holona, <laughs> and Holona has always inspired me. But you have to hike down. It's a very, it's a little beautiful keyhole beach, and you have to hike down and perch on the rocks and. So I was delighted they chose that painting. Yeah, that's really historically significant. Yeah. Ah, 
From here to eternity. From That's an unforgettable eternity. image. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's see the next one. And the next one was the poster for it at, mm -hmm. at, the, um, at the show. So you can skip through that. So, but the the um, uh, the Marine Artists uh, Association. Yes. That's very prestigious, isn't it? Yes, um, it it is. It's a national organization, been around um, for since the 70s, and it has uh, more than 500 artists is um, in um, uh, in 40 40 states, I believe. But the interesting thing about that is that. That organization has been around for years, but there's a brand new one called the Pacific Rim Institute of Marine Artists, PRIMA. Uh -huh. And it's primaonline.org. Um, and it is an organization that was just created this year to do much the same thing that the American Society is doing, but for the Pacific Rim. Great. So there are artists now, members, that uh, are from China, New Zealand, Australia, Hawaii, Alaska, all through the uh, west coast of the United States, and they hope to attract more artists in South America and all over and link the art between all these nations and even in the trust territories and whatever, but it's just getting off the ground. You're a member, aren't you? I'm, I was named the fellow for Hawaii. A, a fellow, okay. A fellow for Hawaii. So you were shown in the national yes. and now you're a fellow in the, in the Pacific <laughs> Rim. Impressive. Okay, let's go to more photographs. Photographs. Okay. All right. This is not a plein air painting, but it is a, a studio painting based on a plein air uh, image from down at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And I love to paint canoes. They're one of the hardest things you can paint. And it's very difficult outdoors, uh, but you can get a start on it. But this was a fairly large painting, and I, I just love the graphic nature of it. And you asked me earlier about what's my future and whether I want to stay doing the landscape, seascape thing. Well, I started out doing a lot of abstracts. So this painting feeds my abstractness. I, I really love the abstract nature of that painting. And um, that's kind of the direction I'd like to Really? Yeah. Well, a comment, even, on, a comment on that yeah. is that um, you know, sometimes we see abstracts and we wonder whether there's any talent there. And uh, as in the case of Picasso, who, who is a, a realist kind of painter in the early stages of his professional career, um, that was confirmation that he could actually paint. Yes. And then, then you look at the abstract really later on, you, you see more in the abstract That's because you realize that he's a real painter, not just you know, doing Jackson Pollock. That's right. Although Jackson Pollock could probably paint pretty well, too. Probably so. <laughs> probably so. So anyway. Su Susie has proven <laughs> that she can paint. Now she can do whatever she now wants. Now I can do whatever in, I want. In terms of abstract. Yeah. Well, let's go back to that, uh, the canoe for a moment. Um, you said that, that, that it's hard to paint canoes, and I'm curious why. Because there's not a straight line on those boats. <clears throat> everything is curving, absolutely everything. And so you have to get the design down. You have to get the structure down properly, or nobody's going to believe it's a canoe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this one had such great color, and the reflections in the water just really attracted me. So It's the reflection, you know, it's the, the light. Yeah, right? The light, it's the light. The light it's of the... Of the the, the canoe against the water, the water against the canoe. That sounds very complicated. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a lovely painting. Thank you. Yeah, I, call you that, sure I call that Captain and Crew. <laughs> really? That's a great name for it. <laughs> my husband named it. He names a lot of my paintings. Well, I'd <laughs> very say good that, at that your paintings well, I just have, paint them. He names them. <laughs> your paintings have really wonderful titles. I, I'm reminded of one, was it one you showed me of a... Of, a, of an old piece of farm equipment oh, in a field, yes. oh, yeah. and it, it had been retired. It was back from the 30s and the 40s in a plantation somewhere. Yes. It was a big, wonderful painting, oh. and you had this fabulous title for it. Oh, well, you know, since you brought this up, this is a little early Christmas present for you, Jay. <laughs> Really? Yes, really. <laughs> I was going to wait till the end. You know my taste, then, eh? Um, I'm going to open this up because I have a feeling I know what's here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Of course. This is an original painting from this Susie is an Anderson. This is an original painting. Okay, let me show you. This is the one I... This is, yes. this is not rehearsed, you know. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is a wonderful painting of, a, of an is, old piece of plantation farm equipment. This is called Out to Pasture. Out to Pasture. And yeah. I think you called it Old Yellow, I think, when you saw yeah, it a really? few years ago. <laughs> and this was done on plein air at Kapa'a Sugar Plantation on Kauai. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah. now it belongs to you, my friend. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> Out to Pasture, 2011, <laughs> Susan, uh, Su Susie Y. Anderson on plein air, uh, Kaloa Sugar Mill, yes. Kauai. I will treasure this. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Every, you know, you walked happened. right into that. <laughs> <laughs> walked right into that. That was the surprise you referred that to. That was the surprise, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. You're welcome. So and where are you in, in the world of en plein air? I mean, we know that you're um, exhibiting I'm nationally. Out there. <laughs> you're out there. Um, you know, now, for a long time, for 27 years, as I recall, uh, I have a recollection for numbers like that, you were uh, a member, a partner of the gallery uh, in Ward at Center. At Ward Center. I wasn't part of that that long. Um, I was only part of that for 14 years, but still, that was a wonderful experience. Yeah. And uh, I was doing a mix of, like I am now, of, of plein air and studio pieces. Uh -huh. You can't always uh, set up your easel in some places that you want to paint or photographs. You have to rely on photographs and your memory and how impactful the scene is. Um, but I, I, st I love the plein air just because it's, it's exciting and challenging um, much more. And to be as a partner in a gallery is yes. interesting. I think it it's probably doesn't happen very much, and you have yeah. to have a number of artists who are on the same page, who are willing to spend their time, maybe invest some money, oh, yes. um, and, you know, pay the rent every month. Well, it's a business. It's a business. It's, you have a, gal and a lot of galleries are closing because the internet and, you know, social media, all of these things are, are um, trumping uh, brick and mortar places. Don't use places. that word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to become more popular as we go forward. <laughs> Let's go on to a different subject. Would you like to look at the next couple of yeah, pictures? Let's look at the some more pictures. The next couple of pictures yeah. are really We get off the, polit the <laughs> politics yes, for a minute. <laughs> okay. This was a plein air painting of a spot that I love to paint at. I don't know if you recognize it, but it's off of Beach Road at the very foot of Diamond Head. And I took my easel down there one morning about six months ago. And it was a beautiful morning, and there were two fishermen out on the end. So this is the completed painting. But if you would change to the next um, picture, I'll show you. This was the oh. two fishermen that oh, came no up to kidding. my easel oh. afterwards <laughs> and were so excited to be a part of that. And at that point, I had only painted one of the two guys out there. <laughs> so I had to paint both of them. <laughs> but yeah, it was they were just, so happy to be included. Yeah, yeah it, oh, it was wonderful. And so these are the kinds of things that I absolutely love about painting in plein air yeah. because you get to meet interesting people, you get to uh, go to places that you may never have had an opportunity to go to before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, you know, look at the joy. The joy, I don't know who was grinning more, those guys or me, but <laughs> we, we all had a great time. It's, so. it's a lovely photograph, too. <laughs> before we go for our break, I just want to go, I want to re return to the previous picture. Okay. Now, just the picture just before that of the painting itself. Okay. Uh, just, there, it is. there it is. Now, you know, my reaction, and I'm no expert on this, is that this, this picture has so much heart. You are seeing through the, you know, the detail of, of what, what a person would see with his eyes. You are breathing life into the ocean. It's more than wow. what you would see with a camera. Um, and the sky is more than what you would see with your eyes and the trees and so forth and the beach. I mean, it's... <clears throat> it uh, it has a quality beyond reality. It, it, it is sending a message. It is sending a number of messages. Do you think of those things when I, you paint? I can't paint unless I have passion for the subject. And I, I love painting skies. I, I love the ocean, and I'm passionate about it. And if if I can get some, if I can transfer that excitement to the canvas and then for somebody who has never seen the painting before pick that up, that just makes my heart sing. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> and mine, and mine. We're going to take a short break so I can run out and get this thing framed over here. We'll be right back okay. in one minute. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Merry Christmas, everybody! 
Feliz Navidad, prospero on you y felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. We're back, we're live with one of my favorite people uh, here on, uh, what is it, Creative uh, Contributions, one of my favorite shows. Um, talking with Susie Y. Anderson, who's an en plein air painter. Are there many en plein air painters? I mean, that's an unusual term. Right? Oh, there's, uh, usually people drop the on, but it's just plein air. Uh, and yes, it's, it's just taken off like wildfire, all over the world, really. Interesting. Because people are finding out how much fun it is. Do they, they all have the same, you know, I guess they all have the same kinds of uh, subjects. They're, uh, they're at the beach. Um, or they're in, in open spaces and they yeah, do landscapes. Yeah, but you know, you could you could set up a still life out in your garden and call it en plein air, because it's basically painting from life, um, mm -hmm. and usually outdoors. You could do a figure outside, and it would be considered en plein air. So, but, so our part and, of it is capturing the right, air. Right, right. And I have a, f a couple of friends that do beautiful abstracts, and standing next to me while I'm doing something representational, and, and <laughs> it's, it's marvelous to is see that. Is that en plein air? No. Yes, yes, it is. yes. Oh, you can sure. do en plein air and sure, abstract, sure. too. Sure, sure. Okay. You can be inspired, of course. So uh, how long have you been painting, without revealing any personal data here? <laughs> I've been painting seriously and professionally as a painter, as a fine artist painter, since 2000. <coughs> Excuse okay. me. Well, it's not that long, yeah. actually. And, but I had been painting um, throughout my earlier careers. I had two other careers before I became a fine artist, and um, would paint as I could, you know, between, between jobs and things. But, you have to have the, the time to devote to it, and now it's 100%, so yeah. besides the travel. Yeah. yeah. Why, why did you become a professional? What led you to that? Gosh, uh, well, I was always a professional artist. I was a medical illustrator with the med school I remember first. That, yeah. I had a 20 year career designing litigation graphics for attorneys. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And so that was the graphic part. Good training, actually. Yes, exactly. All that was in training for becoming a fine artist, a plein air artist. But at some point you said, <laughs> enough of that. Yes, enough uh, of that. I want to paint for myself. I want to paint um, what my heart tells me to paint. And. Uh, uh, the mortgage was paid for at that time, so that was a That's lucky a big stroke. <laughs> yeah, big factor. <laughs> Don't give up your day job otherwise, <laughs> right? I mean, the art, the art. Um, this this field is very difficult um, if you are uh, depending on it to make a living, because uh, you know a lot of people are enjoying getting out there and painting themselves and and um, doing plein air and they may not be professional but they're having a great time of it uh, but the galleries are struggling generally all over it's not just in Hawaii but it's it's kind of all over so. well you know you can go on the internet you can use any number of computer programs and come up with very attractive looking graphics Right. And we're surrounded with color and graphics of all kinds and movies and right. animations and you <coughs> name it. So um, you have a lot of competition out there for people's yes. attention. Yeah. Yes, and also the web, it has all kinds of online courses you can take, uh, workshops that, that are wonderful. Um, but one of, the, one of the experiences that I had recently in early November, and I'd, I, I would encourage anybody that's interested in doing plein air in Hawaii is that there is a group called the Plein Air Painters of Hawaii. And it was begun in um, Maui, it's still headquartered in Maui, but it's open to all artists across the Hawaiian Islands. And they have paint outs. Once paint outs. Paint outs or <laughs> once or twice a year on the different islands. It sounds like a hackathon. <laughs> yes, that's about it. <clears throat> and we were on on a beautiful island of Kauai, my favorite, for five day, four days with solid painting from sunup to sundown. And we painted 
everywhere. I mean, North Shore, West <laughs> Side. I, was, all I like over. to be there just to watch, you know. It was and amazing. Take pictures. <laughs> amazing, yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes there were um, as many as three paintings done a day. The energy level is incredible. There were 23 artists from Maui and Kauai and Oahu doing this. And the camaraderie is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's just exciting. And those are the kinds of things that I live and breathe for. I just love it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that's part of, you know, like we, we have a lot of science and, uh, you know, scientists as a professional matter have to be able to explain their work. They have to be able to engage with the non-scientific community. And I would say the same thing exists with artists. I mean, you, you can't paint in a silo. No. Um, you, you express yourself, but then you have to express what you expressed. And you have to be able to talk to your peers, your other, your artists that may work with you or yes. paint with you in paint outs and the like. Oh, yes. And you have to be able to talk to the public, whether it be in the gallery at, at Ward Center or here today or, you know, whoever you're talking to, to try to convey what you're doing and why it is relevant and important and better than a computer program. That's right. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. So you had that gift. And have you been doing that from the beginning to talk to people and express yourself? Well, I think so. Yes, I do. And, um, you know, every experience builds on the next one. And yeah. uh, it's like those two fishermen that came up to talk. I mean, that was, that was just so joyful for all of us. Yeah. That's what this painting is. This is joyful. Yeah. It's, it's not talking politics. It's creating something wonderful that has perhaps legs, you know. That painting right there, you know, is a kind of a historic painting because that's the other issue is that <laughs> I love to paint things that may not be here next year. Yeah. Like the sugar and the pineapple, whole, all those subjects. I've painted lots yeah. of those paintings. And they're all sold because they're, they're, they're a piece of Hawaii history that have been preserved for future generations to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you pass, you pass that on to somebody else. <laughs> and so what other kind of um, career can you ha say that gives you that kind of... Uh, wonderful feeling of, of uh, uh, continuity yeah, and joy. Yeah, but you know, you touched on, you know, the, the idea of nostalgia, of, of seeing things in a historical context. So, um, you know, the, this one, yes. uh, out to pasture or old yeller, as the case may be, <laughs> um, that touches me because it is, uh, it, it, it makes, you know, historically, historical Hawaii recapturable somehow. Yeah. I have a piece of the past that's the message to me, and it is a beautiful past. It's like Proust. Um, you know, it floods into your mind. It <clears throat> touches some nerve in your mind and makes you remember all the things that you and your mind associate with this period of time, this kind of thing. So it, it gives you a special treat, a special dessert. But there's more than just nostalgia here. When I look at the painting of the ocean, I get all kinds. I get a fireworks of messages about the environment. I can feel the water. I can feel my feet on the beach. Uh, my whole life is, you know, becomes tactile because of what you did in that painting. Thank you. Wow, you made my you made my year, Jane. Thank you very much. May but, I quote you? Uh, all I'm saying is, it's more than nostalgia. Yeah, it is. It is, it is it human is. sensibility. Yeah. It's uh, it's this sensory perceptions um, yeah. being being delivered to you by the painting. Well, that's why it's important to fund the arts, so that young kids coming up understand the importance of what they're doing. And um, it's just incredibly important to round out uh, what we're doing in, in all the different fields. Well, let's talk about that. I, okay. I think, you know, you, I, I don't want you to be modest about this. You're a leader in, this, in painting in Hawaii. And it's not only because you're a terrific painter and you have, um, you know, the, the sensibility to deliver the message, um, but because you've been doing it a long time and you have, in fact, delivered the message for a long time. Um, and so I, I look to you to talk to the next generation um, and to try to encourage them to do this because this is not only good for the painter, it's good for the, the community. It is. What is it? A, a, a great state deserves great art, right? That's, there's that's, a living that's example right. <laughs> right here next to me. <laughs> well, there are many wonderful artists in, in this state. And one of the opportunities for the public to see wonderful art is at the Punahou Carnival Art Show yes. coming up in early February. Yes. So I hope 
anyone who's listening to this program will um, take the time to go to Punahou and see this because this show is open. It's not a closed show. It's not a curated show. It's open to all artists. Anybody can anybody. put a painting in there. You could paint it, put a painting in there if you wanted to. Well, that's to. going a little far. And it's, yeah. <laughs> okay. But it is... Um, uh, it is a benefit for the school, but it benefits the art artists as well. And just um, a couple weeks ago, I I, I, I love doing um, shows like that. The uh, North Shore, um, uh, 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 there was a benefit for the. Um, oh gosh, I'm. Um, it was the community foundation for the North Shore, and they had a benefit auction. And I participated in, with my paintings out there, and it's and it's a wonderful opportunity again to support um, these uh, charities or these nonprofits so that they can continue their good work. And yes. I think that's one of the things that artists like myself try to do um, as frequently as possible. For the common good. For the common good, exactly. And, and you know, I mean, the important thing, if, if you want to have a take home on this, is that we need to have art in Hawaii. We need more Susie Andersons going forward. We need more of her work. We need to capture those seascapes and landscapes <laughs> and even the abstracts so that we, you know, it's food for the soul is what it is. Yeah. And um, we can't let that dry up. We can't let the no. computer-assisted graphics no. you know, take the field here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last thing I'd like to talk about is, okay. uh, is the dynamic of an artist. You know, we talked briefly about Picasso and all that, how he went through various stages in his life. And after you, after the gallery uh, at uh, Ward Center closed, it was in early uh, 2015. Yes. Um, you know, you went traveling. You had more time uh, to reflect. Yes. To maybe see the world oh, yes. more intensely yes. to, and to translate that into your work. Yes. Can you talk about, uh, you know, the dynamic process of an artist who can get out either in the work or in the travels mm -hmm and how that changes your way of thinking, looking at the universe, and, and how it changes your art. Well, we had an opportunity to travel both to um, Italy last year for five weeks, and Spain this, um, this fall for a month, um, as well as New York City just recently. And all of those places, uh, uh, we make a beeline for the, for the different um, art galleries, the museums, because so much fine art is in each of these cities that we never see. The, you don't get to see the, the everyday kind of art. And so it's an education. It's totally an education. And for instance, we were in New York um, just a few weeks ago and went to the New Whitney Museum, and they had an exhibit of fantastic exhibit of portraits. Um, everything from very, very contemporary abstract portraits to very um, uh, representational ones. And this is it the inspired new me, yeah, the new Whitney, and yeah. it inspires me to, to learn how to do portraiture, just um, even in an abstract format. So those are the kinds of things that are um, absolutely critical to the life of an artist because you don't want to stay static, you want to keep moving. Yeah. I've painted just about every beach there is on this island yeah. and on uh, many others also. <laughs> And so the challenge for me is to go back and paint it in a different way. And going on um, doing these trips and seeing how other artists have um, captured their local scenes and their beaches and their landscapes inspires me to go back to the same places that maybe didn't inspire me so much the last time with new eyes. And see it differently. Yeah. See it differently. What about portraiture? I mean, what's in your future? Will you move on uh, to other you know subjects? Um, this is this is really an important question. Where where is it all going for you, Susan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a um, I don't have a, a crystal ball, but um, I'm interested in everything. I really am. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm interested in portraiture. I'm, I'm very interested in going back to the abstract and getting more abstract with my representational work. Because with every painting that I do that's representational, you can take a corner out of it and you can say, that would make a wonderful abstract painting. You don't have to look any further than that. But painting abstract, I paint from the inside out. Painting landscapes and seascapes, I paint from the outside in. Uh, That's the difference. More, uh, you know, more the abstracts are more self-generated, uh, and it's more thoughtful in some ways. But uh, it's all great. 
Hawaii has uh, <laughs> such great uh, possibilities for art. We live in a beautiful place with beautiful people. Right now, there's a ceramics uh, exhibit going on at Lini Kona, which yes. is a, uh, just across the street from the Honolulu Museum. And um, we ought to see that. We ought to participate in that. We ought to enjoy that, revel in it. We ought to do it, you know? The other thing I want to say in closing, Susie, is that uh, I'm reminded of Rodin. Rodin, uh, you know, carved out of a block of marble, and at the end, he found his statue in the block of marble. Yeah. And in a way, what you describe is the, the artist herself is a block of marble. And, and as she chips away at life, she finds in the, in the core of the block of marble, she finds herself. She finds her ultimate artistic destiny. And I think that's what you're finding. And I, I hope so I never see the you. end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to get to the very end of it. No. No. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Susie. Susie Anderson. Delightful. Delightful always. <laughs> Thank you.